Hello, this is part 15 of our comparative Bible study where Jesus has just attended the Passover in the early part of his earthly ministry, and he is passing through the region of Samaria, returning to Galilee. During this Bible study, I would like to wrap up our discussion regarding the woman at the well. Overall, this is our 40th New Testament Bible study. During the previous six Bible studies, I tried to provide some amplifying information regarding the Samaritans with respect to the verses that we had read. During the first part of this Bible study, I would like to back up and address the point of living water, which I basically skipped over in order to complete the thoughts on the history of the Samaritans. In John chapter 4, verse 10, we read, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Moving to verse 11. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? In New Testament Bible Study 30, among other things, we discussed how Jesus often spoke in parables, and sometimes that would confuse people because they would try to take him literally when he had a spiritual meaning. For example, when Jesus said in chapter 2 of John, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. He was speaking of the temple of his body, but the Jews thought he was talking about the literal temple building, the structure. Likewise, in our current Bible study, the woman at the well took this comment about living water literally and said to Jesus, Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, thinking he was talking about actual water from the well. Well, if Jesus was not speaking of actual water, what may he have been speaking of? Later, in John chapter 7, there is similar language used regarding living water. There we read, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. With respect to the woman at the well, could Jesus have been speaking of the Spirit when he spoke of living water? Let's move on to Jesus' response to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This appears to be similar language to what we discussed earlier in John chapter 7. But then again, the woman at the well continues to think about actual water that you drink and draw out of a well. After this, it appears Jesus shifts gears. In verse 16, we read, Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. I actually read a few extra verses there. So here it appears in verse 19 that the woman recognized that Jesus was all-knowing, knowing about her personally. As a quick aside, note here how Jesus clarified what the woman at the well had said about her marital status. Recall earlier in verse 12 when the woman at the well said that her father was Jacob or she was a descendant of Jacob being an Israelite, it did not appear that Jesus clarified this comment. Could it be 
that this is evidence were an indicator that she may have in fact actually been a descendant of Jacob and an Israelite. Moving on, the woman at the well thinking that Jesus was a prophet because he had all this correct personal information about her asked him a question regarding the religion of the Samaritan people as compared to that of the Jewish people. We discussed these religious differences in the previous two Bible studies. Moving on, Jesus answered her question and she immediately went to the issue of the Messiah, which is also called Christ, and Jesus connected the dots and let her know that that was him. Note earlier in this Bible study we were speaking of the Spirit. Notice here the requirement to worship the Father in spirit and truth because God is a spirit. Let's move on to John chapter 4 verse 27. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? As you recall, especially in New Testament Bible studies 35 and 36, we covered a lot of past conflicts between the Jews and the Samaritans, and even the woman at the well was surprised that Jesus, being a Jew, would speak to her being a woman of Samaria. Picking back up in verse 28, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. So through all these things, the woman at the well is convinced that Jesus is the Christ. Let's move on to verse 31. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, There are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, One soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. Notice here it says, Four months, and then cometh the harvest. Passover is a springtime feast. Note also John chapter 4 verse 6 said that this took place around the sixth hour, which would have been noontime. So the disciples were basically bringing Jesus lunch and asking him to eat. Notice how Jesus spoke of meat in a spiritual sense. And the disciples, like the woman at the well, were confused, thinking Jesus was speaking of something literally or physical. So here, even Jesus' disciples, which could have consisted of Peter, Andrew, Philip, and Nathaniel, who were spoken of in John chapter 1, they also struggled with Jesus' use of parables or spiritual language. Let's move on to verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, He told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days, and many more believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves. And know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now, after two days, he departed thence and went into Galilee. So here, many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him and were convinced that Jesus was the Christ, the Savior of the world. This is truly an amazing account. Praise God for it. Lord willing, maybe we'll have another Bible study in the future. Thank you for your time.